Do you ever wonder if the Bible talks about defending the faith? Why should we give people reasons to believe that Christianity is true? In this video, I'm going to share five Bible verses that talk about defending the faith and giving people reasons to believe. And stick around to the end because I'm going to share a special bonus story that will help you see how Jesus gave people reasons to believe. Hey, it's your apologetics guy, Mikkel. I help Christians explain the faith with courage and compassion. So if you want to have better spiritual conversations, please subscribe and ring that bell so you'll always get a notification whenever I post a new video. So why should you defend the faith or give people reasons to believe? Because of Peter, Jude, Luke, Paul, and Jesus. In 1 Peter 3.15, Peter said to always be ready to give an answer to people who ask us about our faith. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. In Jude 3, Jude told Christians to contend for the faith. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. In the Gospel according to Luke, we see that Luke believed how careful history and eyewitness testimony was important, and that it would actually help Theophilus have a stronger confidence in what he was taught about Jesus. It seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may have certainty concerning the things you have been taught. Hey, if you're getting some value from this video, please hit that like button now. In the book of Acts, Jesus gave many convincing proofs of his resurrection. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. Now later in Acts 17, we can see that Paul was explaining and proving that Jesus was the Messiah. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, saying, This Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. So now I want to give you a special bonus story that's actually one of my favorites in the Bible that helps us see how Jesus gave people reasons to believe. But first I want to throw it back to you. Is there a verse that really stood out to you that I just shared? Or is there another one that you would add to the list? Drop a comment below and let me know. Okay, this is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. This is in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Before Jesus healed a paralyzed man, he told him, Son, your sins are forgiven. So then Jesus did a miracle and healed the man. Why? Because you can't tell just by looking at the person if Jesus forgiving him really meant that he was forgiven by God. I mean, did it work? The guy looks the same. Who can forgive sins except God alone? And that's what some of the scribes were asking. But then Jesus gave them something that they could see so that they could believe in something that they couldn't see. Jesus healed the man so they could see him stand up and walk so that they could have good reason to believe that Jesus could actually forgive sins. Okay, so why give people reasons to believe? Because of Peter, Jude, Luke, Paul, and Jesus. They all believed in sharing evidence and giving people good reasons to believe. Now, I've got a whole blog post on this topic, so I'll drop a link in the description so you can check it out. I'm your apologetics guy, Mikkel. Until next time, keep the faith.